Hey friends, I hope you're well. I've been doing a lot of iPhone videography recently. I've had a few projects in a row which required me to use my iPhone and it's something that I really enjoy. The camera on the iPhone is just amazing these days. However, one thing that's been a little bit annoying throughout the process has been getting the photography or the videos off the iPhone and onto my Mac. So after much head scratching and much headaches, I've come up with two super easy ways for you to get your footage off your iPhone and onto your Mac. And that is what I'm showing you today. So yeah, as I said, a couple of projects have come up recently which I've been using the iPhone for and it's incredible. I'm using the iPhone 8 Plus. It's got really great 4K video footage and when you pair it with an app called Filmic Pro, which I'll be doing a video on shortly, it's just an amazing piece of kit really and, and I think a lot of people underestimate actually quite how effective it is for filmmaking and uh, you know and for photography as well for just getting quick snaps and stuff so yeah I've done a couple of projects where I've had quite a lot of sort of 4k footage and trying to get it off the phone onto the Mac so I can edit it has been a bit of a pain at times so after messing around with it for a bit I've come up with these two ways which is what I'm going to show you today uh, let's dive into it the first way right is this will depend on the age of your Mac uh, but my Mac is a couple of years old now and it works absolutely fine. Uh, but the first way to do it is just to use AirDrop and it's really simple. What you do is you go into your photos and you can obviously scroll through your library, find the photo that you want to get onto your Mac or the video, it's exactly the same for video, just takes slightly longer for video. So I'm using a photo for this example. And then you click the share icon it's going to come up with some options and you can see on my screen here it's immediately found my MacBook Pro. Uh, so I can just click on the MacBook Pro and it's going to give me that message and on the screen here you can see AirDrop received photo from Will's giant iPhone um, and that is going to go straight into your downloads folder. So if I go to my downloads here you can see there is that photo. So that's really straightforward. Um, a couple of sort of gotchas that I've realized. Sometimes it doesn't do it automatically. I think because I've done it so many times on my MacBook, it has kind of recognized now that I do it quite a lot. Uh, but sometimes you will have to go on here. Um, if you go to the AirDrop section in the Finder, then that kind of activates AirDrop. So then your phone will be able to see it. So just to clarify, if you don't see um, if you don't see the device that you're looking for on the phone screen, open up AirDrop on your Mac and sometimes that's all it takes. The other one on the phone which you need to be aware of is um, if it's not giving you AirDrop as an option then you can swipe up to the control centre uh, force touch on the Bluetooth icon and then you can see here on the airdrop section it says airdrop everyone and if you click that sometimes you might have receiving off or every you know it might just not be set to the right setting so if you set that to everyone it does mean anyone can try and send you stuff uh, but it does seem to just ensure I, I don't leave that on all of the time I just turn it on when I know I want to send something or, or receive something uh, but you do just need to make sure it is set to everyone or contacts only does work as long as you've got yourself saved as a contact in your phone. So that is the first way. Now if, the, if it's just a couple of photos that you're transferring or a couple of short videos then that's absolutely fine. If however you're doing a larger project like I was a few weeks ago and maybe you've got you know I think I had about 8 gig of 4k video footage that I needed to try and get off the phone and onto the computer. I did try to use AirDrop for that and it was just very slow uh, and the connection kept dropping out. It kept saying that it had failed. So I looked into an alternative way. So onto way number two, this one requires you to actually plug your phone into its connector into the Mac. So if we plug the phone in, so now with the phone plugged in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open a program that no one 
seems to remember exists anymore. It's quite an old program. I don't even think Apple have updated it for quite some time, but uh, every Mac has it on and it's called Image Capture. So if we open Image Capture, what it's going to do is it's immediately going to uh, bring up any connected devices and in here you can see it immediately opens up all of the stuff that's in your photo uh, gallery on your phone. Uh, so within here, what we can do is you can set, you see here at the bottom it says import to, so we can choose where we want it to put it. I'm just going to choose the desktop for now, but you can choose other here, make a folder, choose where you're going to put it, anything you want. Uh, I'm just going to do desktop and then I can select, again I'll just do photo, select photo and then just say import, or you could do import all, but um, we'd be here all day with my phone. But yeah, so we click import, it imports it, you can see that was really quick, and there is the photo on the desktop. Obviously, if you are transferring a huge amount of large video files, then it can take a little while, but certainly it's 10 times quicker than trying to do it through AirDrop and I mean, I'm not even bothered trying to go into opening photos and importing stuff into libraries in photos. I find that to be quite a pain, to be honest. So that is the two quickest ways that I see for quickly getting your footage off your iPhone and on to your Mac. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Write me a comment down below if you think there's anything that I've missed or there's a better way that I could do this. I love hearing from everyone. And if you like this sort of thing, videography, photography, my journey as I'm learning filmmaking and photography, then do subscribe to the channel because I do regular videos of all this sort of stuff and it would be great to have you along for the ride. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.